the team is going to lead Georgia to the national championship. Not either one of these quarterbacks. I don't think either one of these guys are all world. So that's what more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. I top billing a little food for thought Friday here. This time, food for thought Friday takes me to Athens, Georgia for the Georgia Bulldogs, unfortunately, right? So now y'all know me with these Georgia fans. I cannot stand Georgia fans, at least for the most part, right? There are a ton of Georgia fans out there that are great fans and some that I actually really, really, really like that, of course, come from my time covering Georgia. But let's be real here. It is an insufferable fan base that you cannot do content on, if, if, at least if you're me, and just have it be what it be. So remember, I just did the thing about Stetson Bennett where I said that Stetson Bennett is nice. I went through his throws in the Tennessee game, and I talked about the improvement that this kid has made, right? And I said that it may be time to put the – it's time to put the bed, the whole Stetson Bennett versus JT Daniels thing, and they should just ride with Stetson Bennett. Did I say anything about Stetson Bennett being Trevor Lawrence or someone like that? No, I said he was nice. So these people always interpret what I say or try to put words in my mouth instead of just quoting me from now on just quote me don't come to my channel and not quote me because i don't want your little avocado sized brain trying to represent what i'm saying and completely misconstruing what i'm saying i don't think stetson bennett can lead georgia to a national championship it does not matter because he's not leading Georgia to a national championship. Georgia is leading itself to a national championship. Georgia is a conglomerate. It has a fantastic offensive line. It has a fantastic defensive front. It has a crazy ass run game and it is absolutely loaded. That defense and run game is going to lead Georgia to the national title. I don't think it needs some type of otherworldly quarterback for it to win a national title. So if it's JT Daniels versus Stetson Bennett, I honestly don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't care about that. I don't care about Georgia football to begin with, but I definitely don't care about that. I said that that man was nice, and in covering that man last year, I can see a marked improvement in his play. And if you can't see that, you're just biased. You're just being biased, which is something that Georgia always does, man. I don't know if we call it a schism or something like that. It's always a, a splintered fan base that has to have something to chew on instead of just enjoying his team right now that is destroying college football. So people are always going to look ahead, and they and some of the content or some of the comments that I was getting. And I'm going to look at a couple of things right here with JT Daniels and Stetson Bennett uh, from, an, from another thing that I had meant to do before. And they were talking about, well, if the going gets tough, JT Daniels is just flat out better than Stetson Bennett or something like that. And I just don't see it. I don't think JT Daniels is some otherworldly talent. He has a name. That's cool. <laughs> he is not that, that type of guy. He's not Trevor Lawrence or somebody. I don't understand this. Does he have a stronger arm than Stetson Bennett? Maybe slightly. He does not have a cannon himself. Can he throw the deep ball? That, to me, Stetson Bennett could have got better at or should have been better at or could have been better at last year. And to me, he has gotten better at that. JT Daniels is not some type of great deep ball thrower to me. He underthrows a lot of his deep balls. And here's the thing as well. If we're talking about a comparison, so I was talking about Stetson being, Stetson being very good for this iteration of Georgia's team because he can create and extend with his legs. And I kept remarking about him being able to do a lot of the things that Jake Fromm did, but being able to add that element to it. To me, JT Daniels is a very much a carbon copy of Jake Fromm. So this same fan base that spent three years wanting to get rid of Jake Fromm now wants the Jake Fromm guy back. I don't give a fuck what you say. This man is not doing anything different than what I've seen Jake Fromm do. And Jake Fromm, to me, was a better player than JT Daniels I, from what I've seen. Maybe you can – I don't know. I don't even know how you could parse that out and say that JT Daniels is flat out better than Jake Fromm. He's not a better athlete. He does not have a stronger arm. Jake Fromm played against tougher competition. He played as a young guy. JT Daniels is a little older. 
I don't see this. So so now you want that guy back? When you cried about having a dual threat quarterback this whole time and Stetson Bennett presents that, you didn't want the DeJuan Mathis kid after about one game you were done with that, right? Stetson Bennett came in. He had to play against Alabama in a hot Florida team. It didn't go his way. So he was judged off of that because I see a lot of people still going back to that. But I'm like, can you really do that? Is it an apples-to-apples apples comparison because JT Daniels has not played against that many good defenses? As a matter of fact, let, I'm going to check this out, and then we're just going to – hey, let's just wing it here, baby. Food for Thought Fridays, baby. Now, remember when I – on the Stetson Bennett with the Tennessee thing, kind of a similar situation, um, uh, a little bit to go to, to the goal line or to the end zone, and he was able to create with his legs, and I believe he – Either one time extended the play in the uh, in the similar he extended the play and then threw a touchdown I want to say and then one time he just ran it in. This is what I'm talking about with J T Daniels was a lot that we saw um, with Jake from as well in situations like this. Now look at this. Hear him on the pool right here. Looks like um, the potential will is not there. So now he has to come back and reverse course right here and look at all this space, air, and opportunity. Third and four. Stetson Bennett, as we've seen right here, very good athlete. That man right here would have cut off of Xavier Trust or been able to make somebody miss, and he would have probably extended this into get, getting a first down. If it's not there for JT Daniels, which you guys used to cry about with Jake Fromm, and I understood that, right? It does bring a different element. I'm not huge and just having to have a dual threat quarterback. I like all kinds of football, but you guys, I wanted the dual threat because you were tired of having situations like this where it's third and four. And then that just has to happen. Had to just hold the ball and get rid of it. Nobody open. Nobody open. Now, don't get me wrong. JT Daniels is a good quarterback. Not otherworldly. And I don't think he's that much. But let's just say he's better in certain elements with with his arm than Stetson Bennett, um, does that take away or does that present a conundrum for the defense, right? Because he's not seeing – he's not played against anybody good in his time at Georgia. Two games against people that are good. and I So I was noticing people were nitpicking Stetson Bennett and talking about certain throws. Let's see, my guy has 65% completion percentage, 15 touchdowns and four interceptions. So – Obviously, he's not perfect. However, what about the stuff that he's doing that's positive? J.C. Daniels, six touchdowns, three interceptions, and probably, what, 100 less throws or something like that? Like, I don't understand the nitpicking of Stetson Bennett, but then not really saying stuff about J.T. So right here we're going to get – it's a pretty good play right here. Get a little bit of a mess concept, but it's within zone restrictions there, so you get um, a stop at the void. Of the, of the defense right here. So you end up having kind of a levels concept, Lab McConkey right here, or kind of a just a sit down route in the void of the zone there. You can see his ability to be accurate on certain throws. See here, not there. From way downtown, bang! Great throw. Definitely a great throw right there. You see him right here on the mechanics of it. Mechanics look better this year. Stepping into the throw, not really necessarily, he are, he are. Not bringing that leg up at all, really. Look, it's just kind of skimming the ground there. So a little bit different mechanics there. Gets the ball there. Really good stuff there. A lot of the stuff that I've seen from him is a lot of quick game stuff. Going to have an out route from the opposite hash here. All right, looks like it's going to be a split zone. He hits it. Um, It's a long throw. I'm not sure that was a first down there, but just seeing them be able to get the ball out right there. Obviously, you got... Tons of cushion on the coverage there. Fake split zone. Oh, God, what happened right here? I didn't notice that. Oh, my boy. I, 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 my boy Trust. I forget his first name already. See, I shouldn't have did that. Now I don't remember his first name when I need to remember it. But look. Boom. Oh, oh, shit. Down goes Trust. Oh, got jackhammered there. But good throw here by Daniels getting it out there. So if you're going to nitpick Stetson Bennett on certain throws, say that he misses bunnies, you have to also point out when JT Daniels does as well, right? If you're being fair about the situation. Look at this. Uh, sharp slant to Jermaine Burton here, right? Going against 
looks like a, a deep third coverage there. So you got a vertical bell going on right here. Throw with a little bit of anticipation. But guess what? Those were anticipation, but throws it behind them. That's just an inaccurate throw we see right here. Look, behind them. You can only get one hand on it behind them right there. Deflects it up and then picked off for an interception there. If that was Stetson Bennett, they'd be rioting in the streets. <laughs> be like, man, Cletus, can you see that boy Stetson Bennett? He can't throw a lick, Cletus. You remember that game against Alabama? He was struggling. Would you remember JT Daniels playing against weak-ass Mississippi State defense? He was destroying them boys. The fuck out of here, man. Remember, Stetson Bennett could not push the ball down the field. Hey, Cletus, he has that small ladder, Miss Dorsum, Miss Muscle. <laughs> and it doesn't look like that this year. That's all I'm saying right here. So you're going to have on this trips formation right here, trips to the field, um, a very good concept right here, almost like a smash concept. You got in the tight slot here, Aaron Smith running a super deep corner route. And look at the throw here. Going to have what amounts to a levels concept as well. Going to have a, a quick stop here, I believe, by Kyrus Jackson. Then it looks like what was going to be maybe a deep dig here by A.D. Mitchell. So levels concept right here. And then look at this man deal it down the field. Check it out right here. Slide protection. We've got slide protection, half moon theory in, in, in full effect right here. Looks like it's a little bit of a breach. James Cook did his job, though, slowed him down. Now look at him cock and fire. Look at the damn product placement. Oh, my God. Look at that. <laughs> that is hard. Right exactly where it needed to be. Aaron Smith gained that separation and, boom, able to get one foot down. Hell of a throw. One more again right here. Going vert. Can't push the ball down the field, Cletus. Let's set it up right here. Half moon theory in full effect. Great pass protection. Who's that, my boy? Warren McClendon getting it in right there. Now, look at this. This is incomplete, but look at that. Oh, actually, this one was the complete one right here. Look at that. Going down the field of Jermaine Burton. Hell of a throw. Launching that thing right there. Come on, man. You're getting a guy who can launch the ball down the field. Say what you want to say about his arm strength or whatever like that. The results are the results. He's getting the ball down the field. But he has that those legs and his ability to improvise, and you don't think that with that run game and that defense and him, his ability to put pressure on the defense as well, they have to respect all of the uh, potential out-the-back-door fakes, right, whether it be from a split zone or, or an actual zone read or anything like that. You have to respect that as well. So you think you would gain something more with JT Daniels because you saw him play against South Carolina? Right? or some of these Vanderbilt defenses or something like that. I don't understand this. Going to get here against man coverage, Jermaine Burton here on a hook. You're going to get Brock Bowers here on an in-breaking route. And look at this man's ability to be pitch perfect with it. You want to nitpick something, nitpick this right here. Looking at that, having to clear this underneath defender right here, wait for that to happen, throw an anticipation in. Oh, look at the small window of opportunity this man just got through right here. Right? By the ref and everybody, Brock Bowers puts it out in front. Absolutely perfect throw into an extremely tight window. Right? That shit virgin tight. That's hard. Man, I wish I could zoom in on that. I had a different to show you just how small of a window this was. That shit is hard. Come on, man. Look at the different things that you're getting from this guy. I don't know. So, as a fact, let's check this out. I have been asking people to bring me the stats of JT Daniels versus the best defensive competition that he's seen. So, I just wanted to go back and look at the type of defenses that he's seen in a Georgia uniform to really gain perspective here in the really – hammer home that it's unfair to judge somebody by stiffer competition and, and and then point out the stuff like some people were saying like oh look at them on third downs and this and that well it's against inferior competition so I get to go and fight Mike Tyson the Vander Holyfield and Lennox Lewis and all these guys and I get docked out or I don't do as well and you get to go fight Uber drivers you know what I'm saying? Some Uber drivers might lay your ass out, though. You get to, but you get to fight Uber drivers 
and ballerinas and shit like that. And you want to walk around thinking you fight better than me or something like that. Like this shit don't make sense. So in his time, he seen to me two viable defenses. You go right here in this Clemson game, viable defense. One of the best viable defenses there is actually. Matter of fact, let's go right here. This is the total defense. Let's see where Clemson is at on total defense right now. The 11th ranked defense in the country right now in a down year for them. So they still have all that crazy ass defensive personnel and they've lost defensive personnel for the season. They still have the 11th ranked defense. JT Daniel saw that Clemson defense here and put up 135 yards, zero touchdowns and one interception. That run game and that defense won them this game. Think about that. It wasn't JT Daniels. It was Georgia. That's the team that Georgia needed right there where you don't have to count on just one aspect. To me, that's what Georgia was always missing. It's like, we got this and that. A complete team Georgia has. So whether the signal caller is JT Daniels or Stetson Bennett, it should be able to win a national championship. Will it? I don't know. It still, to me, has to play viable competition. We can get into that another day. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I might get into that at the end there. But the t- competition that they've played, up to this point will not be like the competition that we'll see here in two weeks and definitely the competition that it will see in the playoffs. So 22 out of 30 for 135 yards and the South Carolina defense right here, I guess that will be the second best defense. Let's see what that defensive ranking is for these guys. There you are, 45th. South Carolina has the 45th ranked defense in the country. He had a good game against the 45th ranked defense in the country. You can only play the guys that are in front of you, right? So he's not available for a lot of these games. And of course, Vandy in Missouri there, obviously not good defenses at all. So hold on, let me check on Vandy, see if it's a top 50 defense. I don't think so. No, it's not in the top 50. Not a top 50 defense, not commiserate of what you will see or representative of what you will see going against Alabama and those other teams, right? Let's see where Bama is. Bama has the fifth ranked defense in the country and people are shitting on thinking that Georgia's just going to blow these guys out of the water. Georgia better, better bring his A game. They're still playing very good defense and they guarantee you their offense is probably a little further along than Georgia's. So, I think it'd still be a good game, but I would still favor Georgia. I don't know. We'll get to it when we get to it, baby. That'll be a fun week there. But as you can see there, that man. All right, I got another one. Here's another one right here. Can't forget about this team. I will give him. So so look at that. His other teams, Mississippi State, they had a weak-ass defense last year. South Carolina's defense was terrible, especially when they saw them late in November after Muschamp was fired. And those um, cornerbacks opted out. It was a terrible defense. Missouri's defense wasn't all that great last year. It had some pretty decent defenders on it, but it wasn't like lights out type defense. This Cincinnati defense, I think, was pretty good. And the, to me, the results were mixed. They were going down the field a lot in this particular game, an abnormal amount of times, actually. And he was underthrowing most of the deep balls. They were being completed, but they were underthrown. But that was something that I was pointing out, I don't think a lot of people were pointing out there, but I would also like to point out that this right here, 10 uh, attempts for negative 71 yards there, got to factor that in as well right there, right? But he had 392 yards in that particular game right here, one touchdown, one interception. It was overall a pretty good showing there, but they only scored 24 points against that defense there. 24 points against that defense, and how much was it against Clemson? 10 points. The two best defense you saw, the average points, probably 15, 16 points. It's not a slam dunk, man. This dude is not a slam dunk either. You can say you think he's better than Stetson Bennett. He, to me, wouldn't be the reason they won the national championship if he's the starter, which is my point. But what Stetson Bennett does, we see him right here. Even with them counting the sacks as, as yards lost, 35 attempts for 233 yards. So a net gain right there. Think about that gain. Add that on to what he's doing, 50, 15 touchdowns, four interceptions there. And he's seen defenses like uh, 
UKs and Arkansas, which I would think would be at least in the top 30 or so. Let's check on that. Maybe not. Oh, yeah, there he is. 32, Kentucky. Arkansas right there, 37. So you're just, he had good games against these guys, too. He had very good games against these guys. But the other guy gets to play a smaller sample size against um, inferior competition, and he's judged to be better than this guy just flat out. And the other guy gets nitpicked. How, Sway? So I don't know what to tell you there. So, of course, it's still going to judge him. People still talking about the Alabama game and the Florida game from last year. The Florida game from this year was bad. Right. You're going to get Florida's best shot every year. You know that I would have liked to have seen JT Daniels play against Florida as well. He two years. He didn't get a chance to play against Florida. Florida's going to play Georgia hard. That's their Super Bowl, I guess, at least from on the damn, at least from all the Georgia fans who have to always come on my fucking Florida content all the time being annoying. You, it's definitely the Super Bowl. So they're going to get their best shot just because Georgia fans always on Florida content being annoying. So. And he did not have that good a game there, but they won 34 to 7. Despite that, the team is going to lead Georgia to the national championship. Not either one of these quarterbacks. I don't think either one of these guys are all world. So that is representative of my thoughts. Stetson Bennett is nice. JT Daniels is nice. And they're very much in the same boat. Stetson Bennett brings those legs and similar stuff to what JT can do. Maybe JT is slightly more accurate. Maybe he has a slightly stronger arm, but he's not as good an athlete, and he can't put pressure on the defense in that manner there, which could come in handy against more athletic defenses that you will see down the road in Alabama, Ohio State, Oregon, whomever you see, even Cincy again, you, you never know. So we shall see. All right? But those are my thoughts right there, Food for Thought Friday. It's your boy Murphy, the Underground King. Thank you for the quality support. For those of you who have done that, with that being said, baby, it's almost football time again. Now let's get at it, baby. Peace. What more can I say? Top billing. Top.